I want to show you something about lawns that most people don't know. The majority of lawn owners know that if you water a lawn and fertilize it every now and then, it's going to keep green and growing throughout the year most of the time. But if you happen to go past a random lawn that looks really, really dark green and lush, it's easy to think that that lawn is extremely healthy. It's easy to assume that the owner of that lawn has watered it heavily and fertilized it heavily to get it to look so good. The thing is that may be the case some of the time, but the truth is that many lawns that have that deep rich color aren't healthy at all. They just look nice. They may be thick simply because they had heavy nitrogen applied to them throughout the growing season and they've been watered enough to stay green and growing and stay thick. But the thing is that that dark green color that you see that stands out and catches your eye, that's frequently a man-made phenomenon. It's not natural. It's not made by grass paint, so to speak, but it is made by the application of liquid iron, which lawns don't need nearly as much as people think. To demonstrate, I wanted to apply liquid iron to a portion of my lawn back there under the jungle gym. And I wanna show you what it's gonna look like within about a 24 to 30 hour period. For comparison's sake, I'm not gonna apply iron to any other part of my lawn. And in fact, the area under that jungle gym, I'm not even going to apply it as a blanket application. I'm going to do it in a checkerboard pattern. The thing is, nobody does this to their lawns. You're gonna love it. All right, the plan is to put a pattern down in the grass here. Not exactly stripes, a little bit of a checkerboard pattern, but I'm not going to use my lawnmower or any kind of striping kit. The plan is to literally use liquid iron. All right, I've only got so many paver stones, so I'm just going to have to do this in a pattern just a little bit at a time. For this ridiculous experiment that I'm doing, I'm going to be using Lawn Star's chelated iron. The max rate of this to apply to a lawn, you're looking at eight ounces per thousand square feet. I'm going to be doing 50 square feet, but I'm only going to do 25 square feet at a time because that's all the blocks that really I can map out. So if you convert ounces to milliliters and then scale it down to 25 square feet, we're looking at a little over around six milliliters per 25 square feet. I'm going to round it down to five milliliters and cover all of this because I'm probably going to go a little bit heavy handed on the grass and a little bit light handed on the pavers themselves. I don't want to damage the grass. I just want to put this pattern in the lawn and see how long it lasts. To measure out small amounts of milliliters, I'm literally going to use a little medicine cup. I'll throw this away when I'm done. Also, because this checkerboard pattern is going to be in the lawn for probably about a month or so, just for kicks, I'm going to add just a touch of micronutrients and a touch of NPK. I'm going to use Simple Lawn Solutions Micro Booster, and then I'm going to use this Simple Enhance. It's a 1-1-1, so yeah, it's not much at all. Grand total, the cup is going to be like, I don't know, 12 and a half mLs or something like that. Tiny. The Micro Booster is actually going to go down at about two milliliters, two and a half milliliters. Simple Enhance will be closer to five. All right, so I feel like I'm going extremely heavy handed on the grass and not very ha heavy handed on the pavers. So I'm gonna leave some on the bottom. So I guess I'm going a little bit lighter than I anticipated, probably a little bit closer to that half rate, maybe a two thirds rate. I don't know, it's all estimating at this point. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shut the camera off. I'm gonna move the pavers to the other side to the other half of the pattern. Uh, I might film that, I don't know, I might not, but that's what's going on. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to add just a touch of more nutrients to this and a little bit more water to get the other side, but not much. So there's just a little dribble left in here. So I'm just gonna kind of run around the yard and just spray it really thin till it's gone. All right, before we get further into this video, further into this experiment, I wanna say something to you that's pretty important. I wanna briefly explain to you why I call this man-made. This is not natural. Although this is not unhealthy for the grass, this is not what the grass needs, and it doesn't indicate health. For the most part, all grasses, all grass types require iron. It's one of the most important nutrients used in creating chlorophyll. On top of that, magnesium and manganese play a pretty darn important role as well in the production of chlorophyll and the photosynthesis process, 
But for the purpose of this video, we're really just talking about iron. What I want you to take away here is all three of these nutrients, and even iron especially, all of these nutrients are found in most soils. And most soils have enough to keep the grass going just fine. Just look at your neighbor or some random person around in your neighborhood who never takes care of their lawn. In the spring and the fall, the grass always greens up and grows, regardless of the fact that they're applying any fertilizers, micronutrients to it at all. Now it might go dormant in the summer because they're not watering it, but it's always green even though they're not applying this stuff. For the most part, the vibrant dark green colors that you see in lawns have to do with the application of excess iron. Now all soils have a lot of iron in it, so the iron in those soils isn't actually plant available. It can't be taken up by the plant itself. That's why when we apply iron to the ground, we're applying iron in a plant available form. Problem is that plant available form is a short lived state. Granular forms of iron that you would find in a product like ironite or anything like that are gonna hit the ground. 95% of that stuff is gonna oxidize before it ever makes it into the soil and gets absorbed by the root system of the plant. That's why granular forms of iron always have very high concentrations on the bag rate. If you really analyze the bag rate and compare it to a liquid iron form, the amount of iron you're putting down is much larger than the liquids. You see liquid iron is foliar absorbed through the leaf tissue of your grass. It doesn't have to go into the soil and then get absorbed by the root systems to make it into the grass plant. It literally just absorbs straight in. So you don't need as much iron to go onto the grass to make a difference. And when you apply that iron to the grass, it doesn't oxidize nearly at the same rate. What I'm getting at here is if you put down a foliar application of a liquid iron product on your lawn, it's going to get absorbed into the grass plant very quickly. And it's gonna result in a surge in chlorophyll production inside the grass plant. Especially the grass tissues already have an adequate supply of the minor nutrients necessary to really get chlorophyll production going. The application of this liquid iron, however, is not necessary in most cases unless your grass is experiencing chlorosis. That's the yellowing of the leaf tissue simply because it doesn't have enough iron in it to create enough chlorophyll. Especially during the spring, summer, and fall when there is tons of sunlight in the sky from morning until night, photosynthesis is going to happen whether you apply iron to your lawn or not. If you do choose to apply an extra dose of liquid iron, or granular for that matter, to your lawn, it will create a surge in chlorophyll production inside the plant that it doesn't necessarily need. And the result is what we see, the dark green that everyone loves to see. Eventually, as the grass plant continues to grow and we continue to cut off the leaf tips with the lawnmower blades, we're going to be cutting off the extra dark green leaf tips until it gets back to its natural color. If you were to also heavily fertilize your lawn with nitrogen, that would actually push more top growth and although your grass would turn green because of the extra shot of iron that you put onto it the leaves would grow faster and you would cut them off quicker and the green up from your iron application would actually dissipate faster if you didn't have a particularly healthy lawn in the first place and you didn't add extra nitrogen but you did apply a liquid iron product or any iron product to the lawn you would get that green up and it would look really nice especially if you kept the watering schedule up to keep it from going into summer dormancy but the extra green up that the iron produces is simply a mask for a health problem that you can't easily see in your lawn. A lawn that isn't particularly healthy, but it is green and growing, is easily susceptible to heat and drought stress and other kinds of stressors like fungal attacks, disease, whatnot, and wear and tear, especially when potassium is underapplied. There are other micronutrients that also contribute to a plant's immune system and its ability to resist stresses. Just because a lawn is dark green does not mean it's healthy. In my opinion, extra iron applications to a lawn are purely cosmetic. They simply act just like a green grass paint. They look good, I'll give you that, but they mean nothing for the grass's health. And that's why I don't really value it here on my lawn. As I said previously, the time that iron is actually needed in the lawn is when you're seeing signs of chlorosis in the lawn. Early signs of chlorosis in the lawn are when the tips of your grass blades start yellowing, and then as the problem persists, the yellowing starts extending lower and lower and lower towards the bottom of the leaf. This is an indication that your lawn is deficient in iron and it's not producing enough chlorophyll. From far away, you're gonna notice lawns that look slightly lime green. And then as the problem gets worse, that lime green color continues to fade. So with all of that said, let's get back to the experiment and the demonstration that I introduced early in this video. Dark green grass looks good. I get it, I agree. Under my jungle gym, I applied the liquid iron product from Lawn Star. 
it's a fine product. Over here, I have applied nothing. A few weeks ago, I applied Melorganite, which has a little bit of iron in it, in a granular form. As you can see, my lawn doesn't look extraordinarily dark green, but it looks perfectly fine. Now, as I'm recording this, I literally applied that iron to the lawn five hours ago. In the course of this video, it's been a handful of minutes, but five hours ago in my time, almost all of that iron that has been absorbed into the grass plant is already at work. Had I applied a granular product, it would still be sitting on the soil and I'd be running the sprinklers right now, trying my hardest to get that into the ground before it all oxidizes away. All right, having said all of that, today is the next day. 30 hours has passed. It is late afternoon and you cannot see, I, I would be stunned if you can see a difference in that spot of grass underneath the jungle gym. For me, with my naked eye, I can barely see it because I know where the pattern is. I don't have the camera skills or the equipment to pick this up. But I think that this is a good illustration of the fact that liquid iron, although it works fast, it's not like, it's not magic. It still needs to work inside the plant. I could see a small pattern developing here over time, over the next few days to a week or so, it's gonna become more and more apparent. So regular subscribers of this channel are gonna notice this random weird pattern in my lawn over the course of the next month or so. Remember, the important thing here is that liquid iron applications to the lawn are really only necessary if you've got a iron deficiency and you're experiencing chlorosis symptoms. If you're applying liquid iron in any other circumstance, it's just window dressing. Here on this channel, I'm always talking about plant health and that's really what I care about most. I care about that most and I hope that you, my viewers, care about that too. Plant health starts with potassium. This video right up here is all about what potassium does for the lawn. If you haven't seen it, it's an old video here on my channel. Take a look at it, expand your mind a little bit, and I hope to see you in another video down the road.